Great. Um, well, first, good afternoon. My name is Colin O'Neill. I'm the Regulatory Policy Analyst for the International Center for Technology Assessment and the Center for Food Safety. Uh, I'm honored to join my colleagues today on stage in welcoming you all to Terrytown 2012. Many of you have joined us from across the country and regions around the world. And as we ground our concerns this afternoon and make way for priorities, I urge us to discuss not only purpose and direction, but a means to transition from concerns to campaigns. No doubt it is important that we take time to reflect. Reflect on our victories and our defeats, the new challenges we face, and our wealth of our history. And in doing so, give thanks to those who laid the uh, groundwork to make this conference possible. But we must also reflect on a path that we have chosen and begin to determine what the best route forward is. Although the route forward is never direct and rarely illuminated, in the coming days I hope we can identify a clear path and seek new opportunities for collaboration, strengthen relationships with colleagues. I join you today not just as a policy wonk and an environmental activist, but as a member of an emerging generation, a cohort of activists, advocates, burgeoning academics, and young professionals. Collectively, we seek to bridge the intergenerational divide between the frameworks laid before us and the rise of younger generations whose concerns, perceptions, and relationships with technology society differ from their parents in often unquantifiable ways. In the coming days, I urge us to consider how our core values relate to the collective values of younger generations. At the center, our mantra has always been, stop the bleeding, fix the problem, and shift the paradigm. While this approach is probably much like your own, it seems that all too often we must focus on the immediate. Those of us in the NGO community are tasked on a daily basis with stopping the bleeding. And as I look around the room, I see well-worn faces that look more like surgeons than advocates. To use another metaphor, we are plugging leaks rather than and forsaking the levy. Um, <laughs> but there's hope. Um, Although what this has done is segment our work uh, into separate spaces, exchanging oftentimes collaborative action for immediate reaction. And whether it be food, drugs, or human genetic technologies, the levies that serve as our regulatory barriers and safeguards are under constant attack. And the individual successes and failures of our actions no longer stand in isolation. Last year's Terrytown brought together a range of issues, and after three days, we were able to recognize that the goals and priorities of those in attendance were similar and a nuanced bioethic could emerge and, in fact, be embedded and integrated into our work. Our growing movements could uh, be faulted not for an ability to think critically, certainly, but rather uh, an, ability, an inability to think and act collectively. We fail more often than not, unfortunately, to consider the wide range of implications of our individual work and neglect the important connections between work product and political outcome. Today, I challenge us to think about methods for action on college campuses, in public policy, and for our deliberative bodies. Not only do many genetic and emerging technologies have overlapping or similar social justice, ethical, and economic impacts, but their failures and successes send ripple effects throughout disciplines. The backdoor approval of a genetically engineered crop in Southeast Asia may not sound relatable enough to draw a comparison to the questionable genetic testing of college students, yet the impact and impl implications of such an approval would have tremendous uh, effect on the awareness and future acceptedness of new genetic technologies. The impact is even more relevant when we examine parts of the world where educational outreach and political influence may be difficult. And in those regions of the world, the long reach of corporate hand or intrusion by foreign interests often have no barrier. In keeping with those concerns, we must broaden our efforts to include more members from the global south, and our messages must address the underrepresented communities all too often affected by genetic and emerging technologies. Therefore, as we establish the roots of collaboration, let us build new partnerships that take advantage of our collective academic policy and legal strengths. We must advocate for a truly interdisciplinary approach toward philosophical grounding and social and political activism. The techno-fix mentality crosses disciplines, sectors, and borders. So let us come together this year, next year, and in the interim to speak out against injustice and provide a forum for those wishing to do more. I'm extremely grateful for the generous persons and hosts that bring together this tremendous group of individuals. The monetary cost and burden of such an endeavor is certainly no secret. Yet as I was meditating this weekend on the meeting to come, I couldn't help but look forward to the day when maybe we can use our resources to ground concerns in full page ads in the New York Times, the Google sidebars, challenging biotech companies in PSAs and 30 foot billboards dotting highways from LA to Boston. 
our work on Capitol Hill certainly would be that much easier if we didn't spend half of our time contesting the myths that line the advertisements of our subway cars, buses, and newspapers. A worthy idea for the future, certainly, but absent a call to arms and a decisive plan for action, such a scheme would fall on deaf ears and fail to produce long-term change. Instead of merely escalating the media arms race, we are fortunate enough to convene with a brain trust of scholars, intellectuals, campaigners, activists, entrepreneurs, and networks around the world. Together, our collective actions, as we shift from concerns to campaigns, will add strength to our work, multiplying the energy we can put in as isolated individuals and organizations. With that in mind, we must continue to challenge the paradigm that we know all too well, one that places an emphasis to engineer our environment and increasingly ourselves to fit the current industrial economic model. This need not be a progressive issue. We placed, when placed in proper context, every challenge we face and every victory we claim should be done so on behalf of social justice, mutual concern, and I hope a collective call for action. And the emerging generation too can play a pivotal role in this. Younger generations have always made good habit of questioning authority, but for the digital generation, the indoctrination of new technology now begins in the womb. New genetic technologies are impacting young people in novel ways. Students are taught genetic engineering side by side with evolution. And confronted with a problem, a techno fix is always waiting in the wings. Therefore, it is of the utmost importance that we devise a robust and multifaceted plan for addressing how younger generations are confronted with new genetic technologies. A plan to be devised and implemented by a diverse array of experience, backgrounds, and skills. As we solidify our campaigns, let us focus on how we frame these issues in the broader context. We are certainly losing the media and messaging battle to corporate interests and false solutions. Left unchecked, the reach of pharmaceutical companies or sympathetic agencies will spread past the pages of the Wall Street Journal, and realized or not, their messages will shift from embedded to ingrained. This is why we must confront our efforts head on and recognize that a holistic approach toward emerging technologies is all the more paramount. As we gather here today in Terrytown, a mounting war on vital social services is being waged in Washington, D.C. This war is being fought alongside those who aim to tear down regulatory barriers or remove the levies of protection in the face of those who need them the most. In doing so, they seek to strengthen the rights of companies and individuals who would privatize, commercialize, and profit off of the same social, environmental, and economic concerns that bring us here today. A clear line has been drawn in the sand by the Chamber of Commerce, members of Congress, and the foundations and companies who support them. We cannot avoid the p political realities we face. Rather than shouting from the sidelines or trying to negotiate inches in the sand, I urge us to draw our own line and build our own levies that validate and uphold the values of social, economic, ecological, and human health justice. And in doing so, transition from isolation into empowerment, concerns into campaigns, and awareness into action. Thank you.